فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم So the also um, also evidence for that particular principle that we were talking about which is that the ibadah and the da'wa um, sorry ahl sunnah wal jama'ah la yastaqillun bi fahm al quran an al sunnah that's the qaida that we were talking about and that is ahl sunnah wal jama'ah they don't understand the quran independent from the sunnah there's a hadith or a statement of hudayfa ibn al yaman radiyallahu ta'ala anhu that is transmitted from him which we find in Sahih al-Bukhari that he said Ya ma'ashar al-Qurra'i all the reciters of the Qur'an Qurra' are well, people who knew the Qur'an and nowadays the word Qurra' is just used for those who read the Qur'an's wordings only but Qurra' meant at that time those who implemented what was in it Ya ma'ashar al-Qurra' istaqimu O oh, people of the Qur'an be steadfast and upright فَقَدْ سَبَقْتُمْ سَبْقًا بَعِيدًا For verily you have led a very far leading Meaning you are ahead You guys are leaders And you're in ahead of everyone فَإِنْ أَخَذْتُمْ يَمِينًا وَشِمَالًا For verily if you take the right or the left Meaning you sway And you go astray لَقَدْ ضَلَلْتُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا Then you become misguided A clear cut A clear cut misguidance so this statement of Hudayfa is saying, be upright. Be upright in what way? By trying to understand that the Qur'an with the hadith of the Prophet wasalam. The madhab, the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah is that they, they take the Qur'an and they understand it in the light of the Sunnah. That's what they do. What they don't do is as the misguided groups do. What are the, uh, the acts of the misguided groups? They take the Qur'an and they understand it independent from the Sunnah. They'll bring you an ayah and they say Allah said this. But this ayah the Prophet explained it. He won't take it to the Sunnah. Those are an uh, e-deviated group. And that path is path of misguidance. Because the job of the Sunnah is to explain the Qur'an. وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ The Qur'an, the meanings that are in it, the hikam and the wisdom and the secrets that are in it, and the gems and the jewels that are in it, all of that is unlocked by the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And that's why Allah said in the Qur'an, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا Whatever comes to you from the Prophet or whatever the Prophet gives you, take from him. And whatever he prohibits you from, فانتهو, stay away from. Whatever he prohibits you from, والسلام, then stay away from it. Sheikh Salah ibn Fawzan al Fawzan, he says, يوجد ما يسمى الآن بالعقلانيين. شيخ فوزان says nowadays you find a people who are called عقلانيين. عقلانيين are who people who use their logic. That's what they say. Everything is based on their logic. Does it rationally make sense? Does it logically make sense? And he says, well, هم من أفراخ المعتزلة. These people are just the, the modern version of the معتزلة. يَنْهَجُونَ هَذَا الْمِنْهَاجِ الضَّالِ And they are treading on that misguided path. فَإِذَا قَالَ فَحَدِيثُ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ If a hadith opposes, a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ opposes عُقُولَهُمْ Their logic, وَأَفْكَارَهُمْ And their view, and their opinion, رَفَضُوهُ They reject that hadith. وَقَالُوا They even say نَحْنُ لَا نُلْغِي عُقُولَنَا مِنْ أَجْلِ حَدِيثٍ رَاهُ فُلَانِ we're not going to uh, toss our shoulders or get rid of our, sorry, logic. We're not going to get rid of our, our logic and our uqul, our brains. Min ajli hadithin, all based on a hadith that so-and-so narrated. I'm going to drop my logic for a hadith narrated from fulan, who narrated from fulan, who narrated from fulan. I won't do that. Hatta, even if it's in Sahih Bukhari. Even if the hadith is in what? Even if it's in Sahih al-Bukhari, I will not take it.
ولذلك عمر بن عبيد was a misguided group from the belief of the Mu'tazila. عمر بن عبيد he rejected Allah being seen the day of judgment. Oh, he 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 refused the 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 seeing of Allah the day of judgment. And the Mu'tazili he didn't want to accept it. And he said, if Sulaiman ibn Mehran ibn Sulaiman ibn Mehran al amaj told me this, I would say to him, you're you're not you're not telling the truth. If the narrator that Sulaiman ibn Mehran narrated from told him told me it told it told me I want to take it from him. If the companions told me this, I wouldn't accept it from them. If the Prophet Sallallahu had told me this, I wouldn't have accepted this from him. If Allah told me this, I would have said to them, you didn't, slay, you didn't make me your slave to take this from you. That's how much he reached. And that statement of his, you see its manifestation in so many people today. Qala Allah, it doesn't make sense. Qala Rasulullah, the messenger said, Wallahi, it doesn't make sense to me, man. How's that possible? You see, the one who created this brain of yours is the one who legislated this. The one who created your brain and your way of thinking is the one who, who, who legislated this command. And what's so sad is that, are you able to see in the dark? Can you see in the dark? But you have the eyes to see, right? Your eyes can only see through light, right? Your brain can only work through the lenses of the revelation. You can't see anything without it. It works through the revelation, the kitab and the sunnah. The same way that your eyesight is restricted, so is your logic restricted. Your eyes can see us to extent. Beyond that, you can't see anymore. Your logic is the same, your brain is the same. It's restricted in what it can see. Nowadays, it's been unrestrictedly used. Like your brain can comprehend everything. Al-Qa'idatu <coughs> rabiah the fourth principle. The fourth principle. أَنَّهُمْ لَا يَسْتَقِلُّونَ بِفَهْمِ الْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ عَنْ فَهْمِ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ The fourth qa'ida is they don't understand the kitab and the sunnah independent from the understanding of the pious predecessors. That they don't understand the kitab and the sunnah independent from what? Independent from the kitab, uh, from the, uh, they don't understand uh, the, the kitab and the sunnah independent from the understanding of the pious of the pious predecessors. Meaning, their understanding is in accordance to the understanding of the pious predecessors. So they get an ayah, they get a hadith, they understand it in accordance to how Salaf Salih understood it. Why? Because Allah commanded them that. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah An Nisa, ayah 115. Allah says, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبْعْ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُصْلِهِ جَهَنَّمَ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا In this ayah Allah says, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولَ Anyone who opposes the messenger مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ After it becomes clear to them مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ الْهُدَى The guidance becomes clear to them وَيَتَّبْعْ and they follow غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Other than the path of the believers they follow نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى Whatever path that they have taken, they will be, they will be on that path. وَنُسْلِهِ جَعْدَمُ وَسَاءَتْ مَصِيرًا And the hellfire will be made their final abode. And what a final abode it is. But what did this ayah mention? وَيَتَّبِعَ They follow غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ They follow a path other than the path of the... Other than the path of the... So they don't follow the path of the believers. These people are going to be misguided. Are you with me, brothers? They are following a path other than the path of the believers. So they're opposing the Prophet ﷺ. They're not taking his path, nor are they taking the path of the believers. And the believers here, first of all, means who? The companions, the pious predecessors. Allah also says in Surah At-Tawbah, Ayah 100, وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ 
والسابقون الأولون the early generation from them being the muhajirin and the ansar they're the early generation والذين اتبعوهم and those who followed them بإحسان they followed them in good والذين اتبعوهم those who followed them بإحسان they followed them in what they followed them in good so Allah mentioned three people here Allah mentioned the muhajirin Allah mentioned the ansar we're not any of those we are not from the muhajirin nor are we from the Ansar. So we can only be from the third party. And they are and those who follow them. So those three people, Allah says about them, Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. Who is it that Allah is pleased with? Allah is pleased with the Muhajireen. Allah is pleased with the Ansar. And Allah is also pleased with those who follow them in good. Are you with me brothers? If you are not any of those then you are not pleased with Allah, nor is Allah pleased with you. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 113, sorry, Ayah 13, sorry. Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 13. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ If it is said to them, آمِنُوا believe, كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسُ As the people believed. قَالُوا They respond by saying, أَنُؤْمِنُوا Are we going to believe كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَهَا The way that the dim-witted one believed, the, the dim-witted ones believed. أَلَا Allah said, Oh people, إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَهَا They are really the dim-witted ones. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But they don't know. So they were commanded in this verse to believe like the people believed. Who were the people then? The Sahabas. The Kuffar were told, Believe like how the companions are believing. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ آمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ النَّاسِ Believe like those people believed. قَالُوا They say, أَنُؤْمِنُوا كَمَا آمَنَ السُّفَعَى Are we truly going to understand Allah the way these dim-witted ones understood it? So they were belittling and degrading the companions. And then Allah said to them, أَلَا إِنَّهُمْ هُمُ السُّفَعَى The truth of the matter is that they are the dim-witted ones. وَلَكِنْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But they don't know. The Messenger told us in a hadith, and Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim both narrated in hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, an al nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, khayru al-nasi qarni. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the best of generation is my generation. ثُمَّ الَّذِينَ يَلُوا لَهُمْ And those who came after them. So who are the best generation? The Prophet's generation. And the generation that came after, in another narration, in another narration narrated by Imran ibn Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Third generation. So the khayriyyah of this ummah is what? Number one, it's highest in the time of who? The Prophet, he led his companions, and the students of the companions. Since they are the best of people, and since they are the ones Allah is pleased with, and since they are the ones who are pleased with Allah, it makes no other sense except to believe in Allah, to understand this religion the way they understood it. There's no other way. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn Asr radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he narrated. He said, قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمَ That the Prophet said, لَيَأْتِيَنَّ عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ كَمَا أَتَىٰ عَلَىٰ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ حَذْوَ النَّعْلِ بِالنَّعْلِ The Prophet said, it will come to this ummah like it. It's going to come to this Ummah, that which has come to Bani Israel previously. Same thing is going to happen to them. When you take your leg off somewhere, you put it on another place. And you put it on another place. Step by step, we're going to follow Bani Israel. To the extent that the Bani Israel, they had sexual intercourse with their mothers in the open. Everyone can see them. And this Ummah, there are going to come a people who are going to do that in the open. It's in the open, no hiding it. وَإِنَّ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ The Prophet said, تَفَرَّقَتِ اثْنَتَيْنِ وَسَبْعِينَ مِلَّهِ Bani Israel broke into 73 groups, 73 sects. Sorry, 72 sects. Bani Israel broke into 72 groups. وَتَفْتَرَقُ أُمَّتِ عَلَى ثَلَاثٍ وَسَبْعِينَ And my Ummah is going to break into 73. كُلُّهُمْ فِي النَّارِ All of them are in the hellfire. إِلَّا وَاحِدَةً Except only one. قَالُوا مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ All of those 72, sorry, all of those groups are going to be in the hellfire except one, the Prophet said. So 72 of them are going to be in the hellfire, only one is going to make it. The companions, they said, مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ 
Who is this group that's going to be saved from the hellfire? The Prophet said, "Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi." Anyone who is upon that which me and my companions are upon. And Imam Tirmidhi narrated this. Wa fi riwayat al-Ud Ahmad wa Abi Dawood an Muawiyah. In another narration, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? Al-Jama'ah, the group. Anybody who is upon the group, what they are upon. Who is the group that day? The Prophet and his companions. So these narrations, they explain one another and they allow you to understand what it means. So, now the question is, who and what are the saved sect? Who and what are the saved sect? Are you with me, brothers? Are we all together? Who is the saved sect? Ma ana alayhi wa ashabi, anybody who is upon that which me and my companions are. Anyone who is upon that which me and my? Me and my companions are upon. If you are not upon that which the Prophet was upon, and you are not upon that which his companions are upon, then you're not from a safe sect. The name is not what makes you a saved person. The name doesn't make you a saved person and doesn't honor you. The house that you live in or the country that you live in does not honor you. What honors you is your actions and the deeds that you put forward. If you are in terms of belief and in terms of speech and in terms of actions, if you are in accordance to the Prophet's speech and action and belief, and you are in accordance to the companion's speech, action and belief, then you are from that group that are going to be saved. Also the Prophet Sallallahu he recited in the presence of his wife, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, what did he say? He said, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ وَأُخَرُ مُتَشَابِهَاتٌ فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَقُولُونَ آمَنَّا آمَنَّا بِي كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ The Prophet recited this verse and he recited it in front of his wife Aisha and when he finished reciting this verse the Prophet said to her إِذَا رَأَيْتُمُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهُ Aisha, if you see a people who follow these ambiguous verses, they follow the what? They follow these ambiguous verses. They follow these unclear verses. They stick to these verses which are ambiguous and they leave off the clear verses. These are the ones who Allah is naming for you. These are the ones. Be cautious of them. Stay away from them. The Quran is divided into two. Ayat which are ambiguous and ayat which are clear cut. Ayat which are ambiguous are like when Allah uses the we. We, when nahnu. This we is ambiguous. Is it the we out of royalty? Or is it the we when it's more than one person? It can carry both meanings. So it's ambiguous, it's unclear. Are you with me, brothers? The person who's sick will take that verse and say, Look, Allah uses we. And the minimum of a plural in the Arabic language is three. So I'm going to believe in Trinity. The minimum of a plural, because one in Arabic is called Mufrad, two in the Arabic language is called A, Muthanna. And then the Jama' starts from where? Three onwards, right? So the minimum of a plural is three. So I'm going to say, since Allah used the word we, it means more than one. So there's three gods. Oh, this, I believe in the concept of the Trinity is in the Quran. This ayah is ambiguous. It could carry that meaning and it could carry another meaning. But why do we say that it can't carry this meaning right now? Why are we not going to allow that meaning? Because Allah says, وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ واحد. وَإِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ واحد. Your Lord is what? One. Allah also says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ And then this ayah, which was ambiguous, has now been explained to what it really means. So we now know that we is out of what? Out of royalty. The person whose heart is sick doesn't care about these ayat which are crystal clear. He'll go to those verses which are ambiguous and unclear. And he'll base his religion, he'll base his religion on that. He'll base his what? His religion on, on that. The Prophet said, if you see those people taking those verses and they're leaving off those crystal clear verses, then those, those are the ones Allah is telling you about Aisha, stay away from them. Don't get anywhere close to them. The Prophet is warning his own wife, who's the most knowledgeable woman, more knowledgeable than all of us put together, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anam. She knows the religion better than us. 
She's more noble than us and she's more greater than us. Ma'adalika, the Prophet didn't say, Aisha, you're very strong, don't worry. Go and speak to these people. Converse and dialogue with them. Inshallah ta'ala, your belief is intact. No, he said, stay away from them. However much knowledge you have, it doesn't matter, stay away from them. So if the Prophet warned his own wife about these people, then we are from Imbab al We are more appropriate to be staying away from these people. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, he said, al khawariju sharru al khalq indallahi. Abdullah ibn Umar said, that the khawarij are the evilest people from the creation of Allah. In talaqu ila ayatin nazalat fil kufari fajaaluha fil mu'minin. They took verses that came down on the kuffar and they placed them on top of who? They placed them on top of the believers. Abdullah ibn Abd Umar is talking about a group who are Muslims. The Khawarij, are they not Muslims? The Khawarij are Muslims. They are Muslims. Ma'adalik, because they are a deviated group, because of the fact that they are a, a deviated group. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is warning against them. He's warning against them. So one can't come and say, Abdullah ibn Umar is dividing the Muslims. He's not dividing them. These people have divided themselves from the jama'ah. And they left the truth. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he has to tell the people, he has to tell the people the existence of these people so the people don't get fooled with them. And Imam al-Awza'i, rahimahullah, he said, Isbir nafsaka ala sunnah, be patient upon the sunnah. Waqif haythu waqaf al qawm And stand where the previous nations stood. وَقُلْ بِمَا قَالُوا And say that which they said. وَكُفَّ عَمَّا كَفُّوا And stay away from that which they stayed away from. وَاسْلُكْ سَبِيلَ السَّلَفِكَ الصَّالِحِ Oh, Zari say this. Take the path of your pious predecessors. Salaf. He's using that word. وَاسْلُكْ Take سَبِيلَ السَّلَفِكَ الصَّالِحِ Take the path of the Salaf. The pious predecessors. فَإِنَّهُ يَسِعُكَ مَا وَسِعَهُمْ Because it will suffice you what suffice them. The reason is because, ya ikhwati al-kiram, the salaf, kanu they were a'zamu nasi uqoolan. In terms of logic and brain, they were better than us. Wallahi they were. Wa akthara fuhuman. And they had better understanding than us. Their understanding was profound. You know what it was? They were. And they also were more clean-hearted than us. They were more what? They were more clean-hearted than us. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Man kana mustannan, anyone who ha- wants to hold on to a people. Do you want to hold on to a people? You want to stick to a group of people? Then who should you stick to? Who should you hold on to? He said, Man kana mustannan, falyastanna biman qadmat. Hold on to those who are dead. Meaning the companions, the pious predecessors. The person who is alive, there's no reassurance, brothers. Fa inna al hayya la tu'manu alayhi al fitna. The one who is alive, you can't reassure that he will make it through. We're all open to, may Allah protect us from it. But we're all open to um, deviation. We're all open to apostasy. May Allah protect us from it. But whilst you're in, your, in this world, you're not, you're not sure yet. You're not sure yet. Shaytan came to Ahmad ibn Hanbal and he said to him, Ahmad, you escaped from me. He said to him, Ahmad, you es- escaped from me. Ah, I couldn't get you. Ahmed said to him, not yet. And he's on his deathbed, not yet. Whilst I'm still alive and I'm breathing, you can still misguide me. He still knows that whilst you're in Qayyid al-Hayat, whilst you're still in this world, you're vulnerable and you're open to what? For any misguidance and corruption to enter you. So that's why we always ask Allah, what? Ya muqallib al qulub The one who tosses and turns the heart, thabbit qulubana ala deenik. Keep our hearts steadfast upon the truth. Steadfast upon the, the truth. And there are many textual evidences from the Prophet ﷺ that the best generation are his generation. And those who came after and those who came after. Al-Qa'idatul Khamisa. Al-Qa'idatul Khamisa. The fifth Qa'idah. The fifth qa'ida is أَنَّهُمْ أَوَّلُ أَوَّلُ مَا يَدْعُونَ إِلَى التَّوْحِيدِ The first thing which they call to is Tawheed. Ahl-Sunnah. The first thing that they call to is what? 
يدعون إلى التوحيد they call to توحيد فلا تنجح دعوة أي دعوة will not be successful ولا تصلح عبادة أنا عبادة will not be correct إلا به except the توحيد so the first thing that they call to is توحيد and no no عبادة or no da'wa فلا تنجح da'wa pay attention is there any da'wa gonna make it through and is any ibadah going to be successful without tawheed not at all so they believe that that's why they start with their da'wa the first thing that they call to is a tawheed because they're following the prophets and the messengers Allah said in the Quran وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا We have not sent down. مِنْ قَبْلِكَ Before you, Muhammad. مِنْ رَسُولٍ We haven't sent a messenger. إِلَّا نُوحِي Except we sent a revelation on him. أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا That there is none worthy of worship except me. فَعْبُدُونَ Worship me. Allah also says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى أَنَ قِيمُ الدِّينَ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ كَبُرَ عَلَى الْمُشْرِكِينَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ اللَّهُ يَجْتَبِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيَهْدِي إِلَيْهِ مَنْ يُنِيبُ Allah says, شَرَعَ لَكُمْ We have legislated for you. We let deity from the religion. مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا The advice that was given to Nuh. Which was what? وَالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ And that which we have sent to you, Muhammad. وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ And that which we sent down on Ibrahim. وَمُوسَى We sent down on Musa. وَعِيسَى And we sent down on Isa. أَنْ أَقِيمُ الدِّينَ Establish the religion. وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ And don't divide within the religion. Within the deen, if you're all holding to the deen, don't divide. Why are you dividing for? Kabur ala al mushrikida ba tad'uhum ilay. It has become big in the eyes of the polytheists, that which you're calling them to, which is tawheed. Allahu yajtabi ilayhi man yasha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does each tiba, He chooses man yasha, whoever He wishes. Wa yahdi, and Allah guides. May you leave with the one who turns back to him. So what was it that they called to? Kabura ala al-mushrikeen ma tad'oom. It is very big in the eyes of the mushrikeen what you're calling them to. Because what are you doing? You're calling them to tawheed. You're telling them, an aqeemu deen, establish the religion. And hold on to it. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَلَوْ أَشْرَقُوا لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ If they associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَحَبِطَ عَنْهُمْ مَا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ Every righteous deed that you have ever done, it will be nullified if you associate partners with Allah. If you associate partners with Allah, the sadaqah that you gave, the fasting that you came with, the salah that you came with, the hajj that you went to, the good deeds that you came and you accumulated, it will be null and void. It will be nullified. Why? Because you came with shirk. Shirk destroys righteous deeds. Allah said to the Prophet, لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ Muhammad, if you associate partners with me, لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكْ I will nullify all your righteous deeds. وَلَتَكُولَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ And you're going to be from the destroyed ones. You're going to be from the destroyed ones. This is who? Nabi Allah Muhammad. If Nabi Allah Muhammad comes with shirk, Allah is saying to him, that I will destroy you. And I will nullify all your righteous deeds. So if that's to the Prophet of Allah, then for anybody else, of course it will happen to them. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهُ Those are the ones who Allah has guided. فَبِهُدَاهُ مُقْتَدِ Hold on to their guidance. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ And say to the people, I don't ask of you. أَجَرَى I don't ask any reward from you. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرَى لِلْعَالَمِينَ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't want a reward for the good deeds that he was doing. He didn't want a recognition from the people. No way, in no way, shape did he, alayhi salatu salam. But what is it that he was calling them to? Ibadatullahi wahda. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah. He narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He sent Mu'ad ibn Jabal into Yemen. The Prophet sent Mu'ad to Yemen. And when he sent him to Yemen, he said to him, Inna kata'ti qawma ahl kitab. You're qawman min ahl kitab. You're going to meet and see a people from the people of the scripture. The ahl kitab. Falyakun let it be. Awwala ma tad'uuhum ilayhi shahadatu an la ilaha illallah. Let the first thing you call them to be shahadatu an la ilaha illallah. That there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let that be the first thing you call them to. Ya ikhwat al-kiram, my beloved brothers and sisters, the first da'wah of Nabi Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all the prophets were tawheed. And then Mu'ad, who was now sent to Yemen, the prophet said, let the first thing you call them to be tawheed. That's the first da'wah. That's what you start with. Don't talk to them about fada'il al-a'mal. Don't talk to them about siyasa and politics. Don't talk to them about uh, heart softening. Start with Tawheed first. Start with at Tawheed. The Prophet's da'wah started with what? At Tawheed. And what did he finish with? At Tawheed. He finished it with Tawheed. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, لما نزل برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم طفق يطرح خميصة له على وجهه. When the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he the agony of death and the pain was getting too much. There was a cloth in which he was placing on his head, and the cloth it was being wet, so he was put on his head because his temperature was high. عليه الصلاة والسلام. At that particular moment, the prophet was fainting, and he would become conscious again, and then he would faint. And then he would come conscious again. And look what he said in between those, the, in between the conscious, while he was, in between the faintings. Look what he said in between that while he was conscious. He said, Allah, may Allah's curse be upon. Ala al Yahudi wa Nasara, the Christians and the Jews. Why? They took the graves of their prophets. And in other narrations, the Prophet said, وصالحيهم, and their righteous ones. They took it as a grave. Uh, sorry, they took it as a masjid. They took the graves and they built masjids on top of it. May Allah's curse be upon them. May Allah's curse be upon the Christians and the Jews. The Prophet say this. Another narration says, this was five years before he died. Five days before he died. Five days before the Prophet died. He was saying this. What did Aisha say? The reason why he did this was because he was warning about what the Christians and the Jews were doing. Meaning, oh my God, my people, stay away from me. Don't do this. Then Aisha says, Aisha said, because of this, if it wasn't for that sake, the Prophet's grave would have been made to the open. Everybody so they can see him. It would have been open to the people and it would have been made open wide. But she said, But the fear that people may take it as a masjid and pray there was, was there, it was scared. So it was, walls were made around it to protect the people from coming to it. Are you with me, brothers? Before he dies, he's warning against shirk. His da'wah started with what? Qulu la ilaha illallah tuflihu. Hold on to la ilaha illallah, you're going to find success. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al-anbiya ikhwatun min allat. The Prophet said that the prophets are brothers. They are all brothers. Min Allah. The word Allah means brothers who have the same dad but different moms. That's what Allah is. So what he's trying to say is all of us prophets, we have same dads but different moms. What does he mean by that? We all have Tawheed but we have other sub-branches of religion which is different. ummahatuhum shatta. Their moms are different. Wadinuhum wahid but their religion is one. The religion meaning their Tawheed is the same. That's the father. Every one of them, their father is one, meaning their tawheed is one. All of them, where they call to, ibadatullahi wahda. Wa ummahatum shatta, their moms are different means, each one prays salah different from the other one, fasting, zakat, hajj, different ways and forms that he's done in. Does it make sense? But their, 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 their core da'wah, which was Allah being worshipped, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sheikh al Mujaddid, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab, when it comes to this concept of a tawheed, are you with me? He mentions that the people are of different types regarding it. He said, Those who oppose the tawheed are of types. 
فَأَشَدُّهُمْ مُخَالَفَةً The one that's the severest in opposition. The worst in opposition. مَنْ خَالَفَ فِي مَنْ خَالَفَ فِي الْجَمِعِ Is the one who accepts it in totality. فَقَبِلَ الشِّرْكِ He accepts the shirk. وَاَعْتَقَدَهُ دِينًا And he accepts it as a religion. وَأَنْكَرَ التَّوْحِيدِ And he rejects the tawheed. وَاَعْتَقَدَهُ بَاطِلًا And he believes that the tawheed is batil. Pay attention. The worst is this one. What does he do? He bases his religion on shirk. That's his deed. He believes that's what he gets him closer to Allah. He makes his religion based on this. As for tawheed, for him is batil, null and void. It doesn't exist. He rejects it. He refuses it. That's the worst of them. Another group of people, he said they are, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ عَبَدَ اللَّهَ وَحْدَهُ Another group, they worship Allah. They worship Allah alone. وَلَمْ يُنْكِرِ الشَّرْكِ But they don't reject shirk. They don't reject it. وَلَمْ يُعَادِ أَهْلَهُ And they don't show enmity to its people. That's one group of people. They're upon Tawheed. If you see them, it's between Tawheed. And when he looks at the people of Shirk, huh? when he sees the people of Shirk, he doesn't speak against them. He doesn't reject it. And he doesn't show enmity towards them. This is a... Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab listed this in the what? al mukhalifin li ta'wati tawheed These people are opposers of a tawheed. He's a muwahid, but he's not rejecting shirk. The next one is, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ لَمْ يُحِبَّ التَّوْحِيدِ This one doesn't love tawheed. وَلَمْ يُبْغِذْهُ And he doesn't hate it as well. He doesn't like tawheed, nor does he hate it. So, you see those Christians who say to you, look, Muslims, I ain't got nothing against you. Nor do I like you guys, nor do I hate you guys. I'm not too concerned about you guys. That's his belief. He is from the what? Al Mukhalifina li da'wat al He's in opposition to Tawheed. The next one is Wa minhum man lam yubghid al shirk. He doesn't hate shirk. Wa lam yuhibba. And he doesn't like it as well. He does not like shirk, nor does he have enmity towards shirk. He looks at the kuffar, he says, I don't really like them, I don't hate them. No. What mean home from them is what? Man lam ya'arif is shirk. One who doesn't even know shirk. He doesn't know it. Wa lam yunkiru and he hasn't rejected it. Wa lam yanfihi and he hasn't negated it. And what mean home from them is what? Man lam ya'arif is tawheed. The one who does not know tawheed. Wa lam yunkiru and he hasn't reject, uh, rejected tawheed. Then the Shaykh says, وَمِنْهُمْ وَهُوَ أَشَدُّ الْأَنْوَاعِ خَطَرًا And then he says, there's another type, and this is the worst of them all, is مَنْ عَمِلَ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ مَنْ عَمِلَ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ 